The subselection tool has two main purposes. It can move individual objects, or it can move or edit individual anchor points found on a vector path or shape. The file you're looking at now consists of a series of vector shapes, some overlapping others. Let's take the regular selection tool and click on one of these shapes. You can see the shape's bounding box. It'll look a little bit different when we use the subselection tool. For emphasis, I'll just pull this down here so it's surrounded by white. I'll deselect the shape and select the subselection tool. The keyboard command for selecting the subselection tool is the A on your keyboard. When I return to the shape with the subselection tool and click on its fill, you can see the individual anchor points that make up this shape. The anchor points are the little white squares that you see periodically around the curve segments. The fact that these are sometimes referred to as hollow or white anchor points indicates that none of the anchor points in particular are selected. So, in effect, what the subselection tool has done by clicking on this fill is selected the entire vector path. So, if I were to place the subselection tool's cursor tip on top of one of the curve segments, it's really important that you don't touch one of the anchor points, but you touch one of the curve or line segments. I'll mouse down and drag, and the entire shape moves. Because no individual anchor point is selected, everything moves. Now the reason that these little vector shapes are hollow squares is to note a significant difference when they're selected versus when they're not. So white means the anchor point is not selected. When I mouse over one of these anchor points and click, you see that not only does the anchor point turn solid, but it also pulls out two direction handles. Those handles are typical on a curve segment. They control the height and direction of the curve. So one of the purposes of the subselection tool is to provide the ability to grab those handles and manipulate the shape. However, because the anchor point itself is now selected, I can move that as well. So I can move both the handles and the individual anchor point. I'll move the anchor point now. So that's how the subselection tool will respond when you select an anchor point that's part of a curve segment. Let's go to the lower right-hand corner of this vector shape now. There's an anchor point here as well. I'm going to go ahead and click to select that anchor point, and you'll notice that no handles came out. That's because this point is an angle and not a curve. It's still a selected anchor point, and the subselection tool can still do its job of moving that anchor point. There are just no handles to move. When working with vector paths and shapes, the subselection tool is really versatile. For example, right now, now that I've selected this angle point, I'd like to make it a curve. If I hold the Alt key down, I can select the anchor point and drag out handles to turn it into a curve. I did a Control Z on the handles that we pulled out of this anchor point. For the purpose of demonstrating the subselection tool, I'm going to select the Add Anchor Point tool, and I'm going to modify this vector shape by adding a whole lot of unnecessary anchor point. Then I'll return to the subselection tool. When working with vector graphics, particularly when you're drawing them for the first time, it's very common to make more anchor points than necessary. This makes the shape a little bit more difficult at times to work with, but it also increases file size as there's more vectors that have to be created when the SWIFT is compiled. So using the subselection tool to select various components of a shape, you might find unnecessary anchor points. Because the subselection tool lets you select individual anchor points by clicking on them, you can click on the unnecessary anchor points and hit the delete key on your keyboard. In this case, I'll select this unnecessary anchor point, and when I select another one, the first one I selected is deselected. I'd really like both of them so that I can delete them with one keystroke. I'm going to hold the shift key down and select the other. Notice that there are now two solid anchor points selected with my subselection tool. The rest are hollow and unselected. If I hit the delete key now, those two selected anchor points are deleted. Let's zoom in on the vector shape and return to our subselection tool. One of the keys to learning the tools in Flash is to become familiar with all of the visual clues that Adobe provides while you're interacting with their products. If you pay attention, the cursor changes quite often. 
the icon that represents the tool you're using will give us little visual clues as to what's going on. Let's take a look at some of those with the subselection tool. For example, when we mouse over a line segment, we're technically on a vector path right now, and Flash is letting us know that by the solid square next to our cursor. This means if we were to mouse down and move, the entire vector shape would move. We saw that earlier. Now place your mouse over one of the hollow anchor points. And there's Flash's visual clue next to your subselection tool's cursor icon, a small hollow square, indicating that you're over a point. If you were then to click, you will have selected that point. That should be pretty obvious when there's curve handles around it, but there aren't always going to be handles there. Remember, on right angles, you won't see them. So now that your cursor is directly over a point, you would modify the path by moving that point. Alternatively, you could also just modify the path by moving the handles. In this video, you learned how to move a single anchor point, select and move an anchor point's tangent handle, and ultimately modify a vector shape.